Virtual reality haptic gloves, something that you would normally have to pay hundreds or maybe even thousands for, is now accessible to pretty much everyone. Now, we tried this before, and I think it's fair to say the last try was far from perfect. In fact, this is all that's left of it. This time, we're doing it correctly. And this is only possible thanks to Lucas, also known as Lucid VR, who designed and open sourced a project called Lucid VR Gloves, allowing us to, for less than 50 bucks, make force feedback haptic VR gloves for anyone. And that is exactly what we will be doing today. Well, for me, a few days, for you guys, uh, yeah, a few seconds. <laughs> All the parts for this project to happen have finally arrived, and I think it's fair to say a lot of us have been waiting a very long time for this. These are the new gloves we'll be using, and this time we're not only using new gloves, but we're using new parts. Last time we used the Arduino Nano, today we are going to be using the ESP32, not only giving more power to the gloves, but also allowing them to be completely wireless, which is something the last ones didn't have. Not only that, but we'll also be making them much, much cleaner, and we will hopefully be using as many JST connectors as we can instead of soldering everything together, helping with that cleanness and also allowing modularity. That should also help you guys follow along at home, because it should make everything just look much easier. So, without any further ado, let's jump straight into the build process. So, first of all, you're going to need a few things. Well, we are going to be using JST connectors. If you prefer to solder everything together, you can feel free to do that, but I'm using the JST connectors to make everything much smoother. So that's the first thing. Next thing is you are going to need 10 10k ohm potentiometers. Now, this is if you're doing it for both hands. If you're doing it only for one hand, well, then you only need five 10k ohm potentiometers. Then what you need is either two or one, again, ESP32 dev kit board. And please make sure it's a dev kit board. Don't just buy the ESP32 like I did at the beginning. Then of course you need two gloves, a bunch of wires, a soldering iron, just for good measure in case you want to solder stuff together like I did in multiple different places, and then you're going to need some servos, these ones specifically. And finally, some spools, like almost lanyard-like, because we are going to take these apart, steal those spools, and put them into our project. Oh yeah, and probably most important of all, 3D printed parts. So you can either order those online from a 3D printing business, or if you have a 3D printer, print them yourself. So. Let's get right into that. So first thing I did is I 3D printed all my parts on my heavily modified Ender 3, which unlike last time, now I have working so reliably that I can have it auto print. It's honestly amazing. I feel like it's also important to note that all the parts you need to 3D print, you can download from the Lucid VR GitHub page. They're under the hardware release. Once I've had all my parts, I spilled them out all over my table because I'm an intelligent human being, and then I started soldering. Don't do this. Do not do this. Do not solder anything directly to your potentiometers. It breaks them. I broke five of them this way, and it took Lucas to explain to me that I'm stupid. The fact that I soldered things directly to the potentiometers shouldn't be an issue, right? I soldered JST connectors directly to them. Wait, what do you mean you soldered JST connectors to- Like, like did you solder, like, JST males? Males, uh, like the- um, but so one, 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 risk, one with risk with soldering potentiometers, potentiometers is you can burn them out. I've actually wasted like a whole box of potentiometers doing that. So I killed all five pods. Damn, that's kind of sad. So once you've realized that what you're doing is wrong, make your JST connectors. Now crimping is an incredibly painful and hard process, at least for me. So please follow a tutorial online that isn't from me on how to crimp. Once you've learned how to crimp, crimp all your wires, put your JST connectors on them. These are the five pin JST connectors and they slide perfectly onto the potentiometers, which is ideal. Then once you've done that, start taking apart your spools. This part is going to be quite important. While you're taking them apart, make sure they don't just kind of blow up at you. They like to do that. So make sure to take them apart kind of safely because inside there's a spring and the second you open them, that spring could unwind and attack you. Once you've done that, take this little 3D printed part and put a nut from one of your potentiometers inside it. Then screw it on to the potentiometer and finally take that spring that you stole from the spools and put it into the 3D printed part exactly like this. Then wind it up inside and at the very end, put that ending bit of the spring inside the potentiometer, just like this. Now you should have a sprung up potentiometer. Then take this 3D printed part and put it onto that potentiometer. So now when you twist that 3D printed part, it'll spring back. Boom, you've done that part. 
Now that you've done that, complete the exact same process for the other four fingers of the hand. Now that you have all four, take one of these larger 3D printed parts, I'm sorry, I really don't know the names of these, and slide in your completed part into that other part. Yes, this is very scientific. And it should look like this when complete. Then if you're doing this like I'm doing it, earlier on you would have also 3D printed a rigid mount. So now take that rigid mount and mount all of those parts onto it, just like so. Now, going back to the spools, you actually want to steal this little hook from them. Then take that little hook and using a pair of pliers, put it on to your spool holders is what I'm going to call them for now. This will allow you to guide the wire through that little hook and just make it a little bit smoother. Now we move on to the wire part. Now you want to take the string from the spool. And then what you need to do is you want to guide it through your 3D printed spool. So take that spool holder off of the potentiometer and get ready to tie your string around it. Now the way I did it is I actually took a tiny screwdriver and poked the wire through the holes. So that way I didn't actually need to make the holes wider because the string actually fit quite nicely in there. Then what you want to do is you want to tie a little knot around at the very end. Just make sure you're on the right side. Then once you've tied the knot, tie the string around the spool. Spool. Then put it onto your potentiometer and make sure that when you pull the string the potentiometer is turned and then pulls back. Then pull your string through your little spool cover and make sure that the hole of the spool cover is kind of towards the opposite end of the connectors of the potentiometer because that's where you want the string coming out of. Now while it should snap into place, my one actually didn't so I ended up kind of helping it out with a little bit of super glue. But other than that, you're all done with that part and you can put your completed spool back onto your rigid mount. Now is a good time to take the guide nodes from prototype 3.1 and 3D print those, if you haven't already 3D printed them. Then once you're done with that, it's time to glue them onto the glove. So take a hot glue gun or any way you prefer mounting these onto the glove, I use the hot glue gun and glue them straight onto it. Now while you should have three per finger, my hands are unbelievably small, so I only use two per finger, just like this. Now is also probably a good time to glue on the end caps. Now while I did this towards the very, very end, I recommend you do it a little bit earlier. Do make sure that all your end caps fit correctly since you will need a different scaled one for every finger. And then once again, glue them on using a glue gun or your preferred method. Once done with that, put the glove off to the side to cool down and we move on. Now you want to take your servos. All the servos have their own spot right behind the potentiometers. All you need to do for now is just put them into their spots and leave them there. We'll go back to wiring everything up later. Now you might notice that with your servos you get a bunch of different sized plastic end bits and three different types of screws. You want to take the one smaller non-sharp screw and screw that into every single one of your spools. Then you want to take the sharp screws and screw those in from the potentiometer side into the plastic side. That will hold everything in place. And the screw in the spool is what's essentially going to be stopped by one of those little plastic bits. Talking about the plastic bits, you want to take the smallest plastic bit and put it onto the end of all of your servos. Okay, I know all this time I already had everything mounted onto the glove. However, now is your time to mount everything onto the glove. Trust me, it's much easier to work with everything if it's not mounted on the glove the entire time. So what Lucas recommended is to get a little bit of foam. If you have foam, I would certainly recommend using it. It helped a lot. As you can see here underneath my rigid mount, I have hot glued some foam onto the bottom and then I hot glued that foam onto the glove. So that's how this entire thing is mounted for me. Now, once you have that mounted, you can start wrapping those strings from your now spring mounted potentiometers through the guide nodes. And then once you reach the end cap, put your glove on, kind of tension the string a little bit, and then tie it around your end cap. Maybe not permanently for now, because you need to test it. So now when you move your finger, you should see that the spool moves with your finger. If this isn't the case, try tension the spring just a little bit more and try it again. Once you know that everything is working, tighten that string permanently. Okay, build process done. You are all set. Congratulations for coming this far. Now it's connecting everything. So if you're like me, you're going to put DuPont connectors at the end of all of your wires so that it's much easier to connect to the ESP32. I even replaced the triple DuPont connector at the end of the servos to single one. And I recommend you do that as well. Then what I did is I actually soldered up a little one DuPont connector to five DuPont connector extension, kind of. It's really jank, but essentially it allows me to connect all five DuPont connectors to one DuPont connector. There's definitely a better way of doing this. Something incredibly important. All your potentiometers need to be connected to the 3.3 volt 
and ground pins. However, all of your servos need to be connected to the 5 volt and ground pins. And then after that, here is a data sheet showing you exactly how everything gets connected. It should be rather simple from there. Uh, you just connect everything according to the data sheet. Once you're done that, we connect them to the PC and flash the firmware. So you're going to need a few things in order to flash this firmware. First of all, you are going to require the Arduino IDE. You can download that straight off of Arduino IDE's website. Second of all, you are going to require the servo library. You can get that from the GitHub page on the Lucid VR firmware page. Everything is incredibly well documented there and shows you exactly where you need to put what in order for the library to work. So once you've done all that, you now need to download the Lucid VR firmware. Click on releases on the main GitHub page and download the force feedback firmware package. Then you are going to need to change a few things within the firmware. So once you've downloaded the firmware, fire up main, and if you're using Bluetooth, you need to enable that, change the name of the glove depending on whether it's the left or the right that you're using, and enable force feedback because we want those servos to be enabled. Without this, well, they won't enable themselves. Now, if you've done everything correctly, you can go into Tools, Board, and select ESP32 Dev Module. This will only show up if you've installed the board library correctly, so if it's not showing up, go back to the Lucid VR GitHub and make sure you've done that correctly. Now is the time you connect your ESP32 Dev Kit board to your PC using a micro USB cable. Once you've done that, go to Port and select the COM port that should have shown up when you connected the board. Now that you've done that, you can click the upload arrow up in the top left of the Arduino IDE. This will upload the firmware from the Arduino IDE onto the ESP32. Once this is successfully done uploading, you're all set. You can unplug your ESP32 from your PC and plug it into a battery bank. Going into Bluetooth devices on your computer, you should now see that there is a Lucid Glove showing up in Bluetooth devices. You're all set. Okay, now that you have all that connected, you are finally ready to jump into Steam VR. Well, not entirely. Download the Open Gloves firmware from Steam. This is like the easiest part of it all. That will install your Steam VR drivers that are necessary, and in there, select your communication port as Bluetooth serial. That should recognize your glove as being connected through Bluetooth. Then in the configurations tab, you can check out your servos. There you can either close the servos fully or open them up. And by doing that, you should be able to also regulate that little plastic bit that you put on so that when they're closed fully, they're touching the screw so that you can't move your fingers. This is how you regulate it. You have to close them in the firmware and then you'll know where like the stopping point is. Once you've done that, let's hop into a game and finally test these out. And what better game to test these out in than Half-Life Alex? And let me tell you, damn did it work well. Look at that thumb movement. Even though yes, I know my hand is not in the correct position, but that's just something that happens. Now, for Half-Life Alex to work, you need a fully blown mod installed and all of that. And I did install it and it worked for a little bit and then it stopped. And that that might be because I need a second battery to power those servos, it is working. And I even got to the point where I can now use the gloves correctly to kind of open up my hand and close it and throw stuff around and it's epic. The battery bank impedes my movement. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Ugh. The kind of intimacy of building something yourself and then using that something that you've built in VR. That is amazing. And the fact that now I'm actually able to fully open and close my hand and not hold a controller is also incredible. Oh my god, we have succeeded. Yes. <sighs> but I got sweaty super fast, and while the experience was amazing, I had to take it off. Oh, can't grab that. Oh, I can. Everything go off. <laughs> okay, let me see what's up with the force feedback mod. You can hear it. You can hear it going vroom, where it's trying to constrict my finger movements. And if I try to grab something, I don't know, let's say this. Here we go. You can hear it going. That is amazing. Here we are, after days of painstaking hard work. As you can see right now, all my fingers are free. But if I go into the Lucid Gloves firmware and click Extend Servos Fully, you're gonna hear a noise. I can only move my fingers a little bit. This one here is always very wonky. But as you can see, I can't, I can like bend them, 
but I can't really pull on them, which kind of pushes the fingers back. But now if I hold my fingers like this, pushing on it and click retract, all of a sudden I can now close my fingers. So extend, boom, retract. What do I think about it? Well, it's still very much a prototype. I don't think it's something you're going to put on every time you want to play, unfortunately. I think it's definitely an amazing, incredible project. And I do actually, you know what, I take that back. I think some people are going to put it on every time they want to play just because some people are going to be able to make that so much better than I just did right there. I know during live streams, I said cable management was number one priority, but as you can see, I kind of abandoned that incredibly quickly. As you can see, I'm also incredibly sweaty, which is always beautiful, amazing. This is not a project for the faint of hearted. A lot of things will probably go wrong if this is your first time working with electronics. It's not my first time working with electronics and I still had multiple issues that were mostly caused by myself and my own stupidity and the people over over on the lucid vr server were incredible to help even lucas actually called in during one of the live streams to help me out am i satisfied with it i am unlike the last time when we made this this one actually seems to work and while the force feedback part for myself in games seems to be incredibly wonky especially over bluetooth that's probably because i'm running them all from the esp32 and if i connected them all to a separate battery they probably would wouldn't have any issues. I could have attached a joystick to it, I could have attached a calibration button to it, and that would have made it miles better. Personally, I don't think I, myself, without any help, can bring it to any more than it is right now. I am satisfied with it. It works as a VR glove, which is definitely the main cool wow factor of the entire thing. And the force feedback part does work, as you just saw right there. So yeah, we succeeded this time. We have a force feedback haptic glove. And hopefully if you were following along with this sort of tutorial, I could help you out at least a little bit, because I'm not the best at making tutorial type videos. But it currently works in Half-Life Alex and Boneworks. Boneworks has its own melon launcher mod, so that shouldn't be too difficult to install at all. Half-Life Alex, you need to go through a little bit of a process to copy some files over to the installation folder. I do think it's a fantastic project, and I think Lucas has created something incredible. And all the parts still cost me less than a hundred bucks for a haptic, for two haptic VR gloves, because if I didn't break the other potentiometers, we'd have two right now. But yeah, that's where we're gonna end it today. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Let me know what you think about it down below. We managed to get there. I'm just a little bit tired. So if I seem sad or disappointed, I'm not. I'm just tired. So many things went wrong during today's filming part of the video with Steam VR, as the people that were on the live streams would know, Steam VR hates me. And my Oculus Quest also decided to absolutely destroy me by deleting my Guardian every single time I made an adjustment to the glove in the firmware. Thank you. Other than that, that's where we're gonna end it. I'm quite satisfied with it. People wanted me to come back to the project, wanted me to complete it, and this time we did it correctly. Like this time I can actually put on the glove and take it off without too much difficulty, which is something that I could not say about the other one. That is going to be it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join our Discord down below. Make sure to join our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spice memes. Make sure to check out the Lucid VR Discord. Lucas is the creator of this glove. He's the one that created the entire thing, started the entire project. So yeah, make sure to check out his Discord down below. And thank you to everybody on the Lucid VR Discord who helped me out, stuck with me, and didn't get annoyed at me with my stupid mistakes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that doesn't put a huge antibody. Talking about mugs, I need to go make coffee. And if you guys want to know about your content coming up on the channel, don't make smart subscribe with your forward day my balance to get this video. Peace.